Okay. Um, um, let's let's hear what the word of God says about speaking up. Um, I'm going to be reading on Proverbs chapter 31, verse 8 to 9. Um, it says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. <clears throat> Sorry. For the rights of all who are destitute, speak up, judge fairly, defend the right of the poor and needy. That's the word that um, encourages um, the topic that we'll be talking about today, um, that the, the word of God is also encouraging us to speak up. So um, let's, let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are God. We thank you, Lord, that you care for your people, that you care for us. And we thank you for this opportunity um, and for this platform that we are able to gather um, to, to enhance your kingdom, Lord, to see how can we speak up, how can we stand for those that cannot speak for themselves, Lord. Help us to see um, where and how can we apply the information that we'll gain today um, in this session. Help us to see... Um, the needy, help us to see the poor, help us to see those who need um, their voice to be heard, but they don't have the capacity to do so, so that we can be the voice for them. Help us, Ms. Cindy, so we ask all these things in the name of our wonderful Lord um, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're looking at the topic of how to speak up as a first thousand day or an FTD friendly church. Um, and we've been looking at uh, all the different uh, ways that a first thousand day friendly church can be. So we, this is the next uh, element of being a first thousand day friendly church. We've looked at um, creating warm and welcoming spaces, surrounding families, equip and prepare, and today speak up. Um, and so we will be addressing all six of them throughout this year. Um, but we want to look today at how can we use our voice to speak up about the first thousand days, to raise awareness to the first thousand days, but also to speak up about the importance of the first thousand days and what some of the issues are facing families in the first thousand days. Um, you know, speaking up is one of the ways that as Christ followers, we really can influence how families are seen and how they're supported. And by using our everyday opportunities to speak up about the first thousand days. So things like our social media accounts. Um, and we're going to look at how, where we can speak up and how we can speak up uh, just now. But I wanna start us off by going, what does speak up mean to you? Um, maybe I am saying the word speak up, but it's you can think of another word that better describes it. Um, so we're going to just, if you wanna unmute or put in the chat box, um, we're gonna write it down on the screen and so we can get together some words um, that mean uh, speak up to you um, so that we can see what other ways of describing it um, can do. So I don't know if anybody wants to unmute um, and share with us one another word for speaking up. Um, so share your thoughts. So, sorry, Nolibabo? Share your thoughts. Oh, share your thoughts. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes. Um, so share your thoughts is one way. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Uh, Grace Shelton, I saw you on Florence or um, Dr. Temikosi, would you like to share? Um, I think some people, Pamela, you've unmuted. Yes, I did. Hi, what does speak Hi. up to you? Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, speak up to me uh, means to, to, to talk out loud, to be heard. Great, perfect. Like talk out loud to be heard. Thank yes. you for that. Um, I don't, Fikile, do you want to unmute? I saw you unmuted earlier when we were checking in. I don't know if you want to say hi and share with us what speak up means for you. Thanks. Hi. I think one word that comes is defend. Defend. Great, yeah. thank you. Yeah, defend to defend. Where are you joining us from, Fakila? If you want to just say hi and let us know where you're joining from. Thank you. Hello. Um, 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 Fakila Siaka. Um, from Kruvostop area in Joburg. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Fakila, for joining us. Um, I see Daniel. You've also unmuted. Do you want to tell us what speak up means to you? Yes. Uh, 
taking out that means putting the word out there for just to everyone to hear. So speaking speaking uh, out for everyone to hear, um, spreading the word out there. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, I see Shelton. Yes, I, I would say um, be the voice for the voiceless. Be the voice for the voiceless. Thank you. Yeah, that and that's what we see in scripture as well, um, telling us to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Kate? Hello, hello. Um, yeah, I think also sharing knowledge and sharing research to speak out on certain things if you have if you have the knowledge to share. Thank you, Kate. So I see you joining us from Joburg. So um, thanks for joining us. So it's sharing knowledge. Um, and Patricia, um, do you want to share with us, Patricia? Um, I'm not sure if Patricia can hear me. Um, and I see, Fakila, you said to promote. Um, so I see we're getting a range of of words here and like describing what exactly speaking up or speaking out um, does. I see we've got beauty. Thank you. You're saying represent. Um, and so when we look at what that scripture um, in Proverbs 31 says, it's saying speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Um, so speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and needy. So I see we've we've actually covered some of that with defending speaking for those who can't um, speak. Patricia, I see you've unmuted. Would you like to share with us? Yeah, to say how you feel. To say how you feel. Yes, yes. thank you for sharing feelings, thoughts, experiences. Um, in many ways, uh, when I was thinking about this, I thought the word advocacy comes to mind. So when you're advocating for or standing up for, or as you said, defending those that do not have a voice or those that don't have the platform to be able to um, speak up. I see, um, okay, I, I see you've got your video on, but also uh, your name is 1JL2. So I, would you like to say hi and you said stand up for the voiceless do you want to introduce yourself so i can change your name no I'm, okay well, we or you can put it into the chat box and we can change your name but yes it's standing up for those um that do not have a voice it means as i said advocating for being a champion of um being able to really uh um put experiences thoughts it's changing the the thoughts of those around us it's giving information it's sharing sharing of ideas um because speaking up can be quite a a big or broad term um and so we really wanted to look at what does it mean um for you and in speaking up so that when we talk through today you know um what it is that or how you're going to be speaking up and so why um is this something that the church can do um so I mean, we we say it's a kunya, the local church can speak up, but why should the local church speak up? Why should your church in your community and in your context be speaking up about the first thousand days and about um, the issues that are facing those in the first thousand days? So if you think about it, um, if you think back to the first time that you heard about the first thousand days, Maybe it was um, someone was talking to you or you attended one of our webinars or a face-to-face -face, um, presentation. If you, What was that moment that you realized actually the first thousand days really are important for a child to thrive in life? Um, and for we would have expressed or you would have heard how focusing on the beginning of life can impact the rest of a child's life. And therefore, the, the path that that child will take in life can change if you and your church focus on the first thousand days. I mean, do you remember that moment? Like we often call them aha moments or like light bulb moments or a moment where it's just for some reason, someone says something that you suddenly like get it where you're like, oh, OK, actually, this really is important. And then when you heard it, you then thought this is really important for your church to know. Um, and so if 
you can remember that moment, what you heard, it was someone speaking up to you. And so now if you want the rest of your church to know, how will your church become first thousand days or first thousand day friendly without your congregation having that same kind of moment of going, oh, okay, now I get it. Now I know what the first thousand days are and why they're so important. And how will your congregation hear about the first thousand days um, and what it is that you want your church to do if we are not speaking up to our congregation, to those around us, and sharing the vision that we have for our church to be a first thousand day friendly church? Um, so when you speak up and tell your congregation about the first thousand days and why you want your church to support families who have children in this stage of life, the aim is that your congregation will start noticing families who are in the first thousand tension, sorry, first thousand days and paying attention to them. Um, you know, it's only once you know the importance of the first thousand days, you actually start noticing the pregnant moms or someone who's just had a baby. Um, and in a way, it then makes us go and be more aware of it. So then we go and ask that mom and dad, how can I support you? Or how are you? Or how can I be part of your village? And so by speaking up, we want our congregation to do that, to start paying attention to those families that are in the first thousand days, um, to start asking those families, how can I support you? And then you'll start to see the whole life of your church change as your congregation gets the vision that you have um, and want to be a first thousand day friendly church with you. And you'll start to see families being included in your con in your congregation, in your sermons, or in your Sunday meetings, and maybe midweek meetings, you'll start seeing families feeling supported and loved. And you will start to see families that stay at church rather than stop coming to church when they have a baby. Um, and you'll start to see other families being invited into your church by your congregation. And you will start to see your church loving these families with young children and the lives of those children being impacted and those children flourishing and thriving. But this isn't going to happen if you don't share your vision with your church. Um, you, If you don't speak up and raise awareness with your church about the first thousand days, because in all honesty, many people do not know what this time of life is, that people don't think the first thousand days is from the day of conception until a child's second birthday, and they are not aware of the importance of this time of life. Um, and so if you do not share how you want your church to be that supportive village that helps to raise a child in your church and in the outside community, um, your, your congregation will not know your heart and your vision. And so speaking up is really about getting people thinking differently and behaving differently, but thinking about how your church can be first thousand day friendly. And so if we think about it, um, how do we see change if we do not promote that change or advocate for that change um, or defend for that change or um, share information for that change? All the words that we use just now are around speaking up. How do we see that change if we're not promoting it? So I wanted to share a few images with you and you can tell me what they're promoting or what issues they're tackling. Um, the first one, I'm sure we probably all know this image. Um, just the words stronger together and that coloring. I'm sure you know exactly where this is from. So, and I think we all um, know that it's a great slogan. It's got the entire country behind a team, um, the Springbok team and winning the, the World Cup rugby. And it just, it shows you how just a slogan can unite um, the country. And so when we think about um, we're in this together. It's uh, as Sekunya, like it's the same kind of slogan showing that as a as a church, as a community, we can all be in this together um, to support young lives. The next one is uh, a logo um, that you're probably also all very aware of. I just have to show that logo without any other words. And I'm sure we all know what that is, uh, right? So as a red ribbon, we know that it's raising awareness of HIV and it's advocating or raising awareness about the virus, about the disease and promoting a change of behavior to stop the spread of this disease and to reduce shame, to reduce stigma. 
Um, but when you see just this logo, you already know what it represents and you're reminded of that issue. Um, if we see the next one, again, just a hand, sometimes this hand comes in red or black, but we know that that hand immediately means stopping gender-based violence. Um, and there have been various campaigns uh, speaking up or raising awareness about the behaviors that need to change um, for the prevention of violence in the home, whether it's towards women or children or gender-based violence. And this is a really big and hard topic that our communities face, and yet it continues to be spoken about. And in that hand, it symbolizes that it raises the awareness and it helps us to continue the conversations. And so in the same way, when we think about the significance of the beginning of life and the impact that it has on the rest of a child's life, um, you know, that about 50% of children are not consistently getting enough of what they need to grow up and reach their God-given potential. This really is an issue worth talking about. Um, and it's this issue that we need to raise awareness about and to see how we can get our congregation doing things differently that can then result in positive change. Um, and so that we start to see babies in the first thousand days that are cared for um, and that they get a strong start to life. And so when we speak up about the importance of the first thousand days, so these are about the facts, um, such as this is in the first thousand days, a baby's brain is growing faster than it will at any other stage in its life. Um, or how language development is happening at six months old and not when a baby has learned to speak already or when they're going to school. Um, we, can, we can speak up about the facts, the role that dad plays in baby's life and the role mom plays. And so we're really speaking about the importance of this stage of life where the brain is developing at such a fast rate um, that will have an impact on baby's education and future employment. We can also then speak up about the negative factors that are facing families in the first thousand days. And we can really challenge some of those factors in our communities, but also challenge maybe some of the beliefs or family practices that may be harmful to mum and baby. Um, and this will make sure that the information that is spread is on, based on reliable information and people are hearing good, reliable information, um, which then also helps th them act uh, by caring for and supporting families in the first thousand days. So speaking up, as we said, raises awareness. It advocates for change of behavior in both your congregation and in your community. Um, when it comes to noticing families in the first thousand days, being active or proactive in caring for those families um, and being that village around them. Um, it also helps to address some of the injustices of the negative factors that affect baby and really um, stop or damage baby's brain development, um, as I said, which will then have a negative impact on school and getting a job and earning an income later in life. Um, and so how can you and your church speak up about the injustices um, of those negative factors facing families in your community, specific to your community, to make sure that people are aware of the consequences of these factors and how a change in behavior will really help children get a strong start to life. Now, uh, I know for many of this is, for us, it may be new information. Um, and if you speak about why all children need good nurturing care. Um, so we know the good nurturing care is uh, stimulation or early um, opportunities of early learning. There's good health, there's adequate nutrition, love or responsive caregiving and safety. It's all about advocating for that and encouraging people um, to have different behavior towards parents who are expecting a baby or have a new baby um, and including get that information for those parents. But we also say this also includes those parents who may be dismissed from church. So we think about the single parents or divorced parents or teen parents, because they too need support to care well for their child, to receive the nurturing care um, that he or she needs so that they can go on to have healthy brain development and thrive in life. 
Now, I want to play a quick uh, voice note of um, a pastor who's recently done the, um, How to Be a First Thousand Day Friendly Church. And the moment that he had where he went, ah, actually, this is why I need to speak up about this in my church. So let's listen to Pastor Memory Mamba from um, Mpumalanga or Mkamazi. Thanks, Ruth. But speaking up from my side, I already started but now we are currently teaching the entire church because this um, subject is new for us. I, I never thought of uh, as, as, as a leader. So now we are trying to encourage everyone in the church so that we are aware of the situation. Lucky enough, we've got only one uh, a member which is in the FTD level. Though now we need to be ready and prepare ourselves for everyone else. Though we've got people out there that we also can play a very huge role because it is not more about the people that we have in the church. It is all about the entire community and everyone at large that we are coming across. Then, so now we are busy trying to train. I'm also trying to compile something that's going to be the subject or the syllabus that we can add on our teachings because we are a teaching church. So now we are trying to compile and see what is it that we can add and all the elements. So I think I'm still learning. So as soon as I'm done, uh, though I'll keep on learning, but I'll, I'll, keep, I'll try and compile something that will be more relevant for the church to understand exactly what is it all about and how then we can implement it. Okay, so when um, everyone sees a pregnant mom or a young baby, they know um, what as a church, what we are doing as a church to be first thousand day friendly. Um, and they are speaking up about, as they've heard in your church, because you spoke up about it, they are then speaking about it. And this information is spreading in the community and you're growing people's understanding, knowledge and awareness. And by doing this, it then influences behavior and attitudes around this topic. Now I'm going to hand over to Ruth, who's going to uh, talk us through where we can speak up and how we can speak up. Thanks, Brani. <clears throat> so where can we speak up? Where can you speak up? Um, we are definitely, as people, influenced by people around us, uh, by those people that we are in relationship with. We are influenced by messaging that we get on social media, from billboards, from various speakers. And raising children requires us to find positive influences around us. And the local church can be part of that positive influence. Uh, churches are already teaching and preaching every week. And so this is happening in your Sunday gathering. Uh, you might also be running a course. You have midweek meetings. And we know that the church has a trusted voice and influence. People listen to the pastor when he speaks. And we listen to other members within our congregation who have influence. And so this is where this can be used to inspire and challenge them. We can um, also be calling people to be serving families in our church around them. We can be correcting myths. Um, we can be bringing truth and light to ensure that families are seen and supported and encouraged. So there's various places that you can be speaking up. You can be speaking up in public places, in private, on social media in your networking moments um, or during church meetings or Sunday meetings, through your fraternal meetings or church networking meetings. Um, it could be in your home group or life group or Bible study group. It could be on your WhatsApp groups or on your Facebook page. Uh, it could be even at in your place of work and looking at what's happening in your workplace uh, and in your friendship circles, your friend groups who you might have influence there and be able to encourage and share information in that space. So discover how you can spread the awareness in the first thousand days and the important role that children can play. You can be speaking up in various spaces. And so how do you do this well um, when you identify those places is one is growing your awareness. Um, so as you think about the topic of the first thousand days, it's growing your understanding around the topic so that you can be speaking into it correctly and so i encourage you to look at our website for resources that can help you to grow your understanding increase your knowledge and see how you can be speaking into different topics and share good reliable information with your 
colleagues at work or your congregants or friends and you can grow your awareness of your congregation as you grow your own awareness um, anyone else that you speak to by sharing these links and resources so if we start with speaking to your congregation uh, winning your congregation over to forming this what we often call in, in we talk about that modern day village it's those people coming around families it's not just one or two people are doing that or a small team of people that are doing that but we really want to encourage the whole church to be reaching out to families in the community and um, there's a mission opportunity to be reaching out to be welcoming uh, to be showing care and so if you close your eyes for a minute and you imagine there's an antenatal class being run in your church venue um, after which you can almost see these moms in this group becoming friends they're talking to one another they're inviting friends from the clinic um, there's all about creating this warm and welcoming space but that starts with us first getting our church on board and sharing the vision so that they can start moving towards families and we can start doing these different activities so um, as we think about it you might be thinking about a father um, if you uh, know that da if dad being involved from the beginning and being a present positive and involved dad during pregnancy is vital for baby's brain development then as a local church we can be speaking up uh, around the topic of fatherhood we can be mediating conversations between mom and dad where maybe there might be problems and we can be encouraging the men in our church to be social fathers and so we can encourage these the role of fatherhood through the way that we speak about it from the pulpit um, in our different meetings we think about the topic of breastfeeding and how important that is and we know that exclusive breastfeeding a baby only breast milk for the first six months of baby's life that there's no added things of water or other mixtures or pop or porridge or amari biscuits we know that exclusive breastfeeding only breastfeeding for six months is really important but it's also really hard and needs more than mom being involved and so we can be speaking up and saying how can we be a breastfeeding friendly um, church environment how do we get our church congregation uh, to be doing that or in small groups how do we encourage that and so we can be sharing important information there uh, we can also be thinking about some of the myths and practices within our community that could be unhelpful or harmful for mom or for baby or for dad and say so what is the information we could be sharing that could help to to encourage and to change some of these practices or myths or beliefs or pra uh, cultural practices that might be unhelpful or harmful uh, we know of a story of a pastor um, from um, a pastor in Katlehong that shared with us how she was supporting a family of four and their little girl was born with Down syndromes and she encouraged she then accompanied this family to be and she encouraged the mother who was really struggling with the situation and coming to terms with how does she care for this child and she encouraged this family by praying with them by sharing Psalm 139 with them but then she didn't stop there she also took this to her congregation and she raised awareness in her congregation around this topic of her reaching out to families where there's disability in the first thousand days and saying how do we as a fa as a church community come around families like this um, she called it her compassionate ministry and she used it as a way of highlighting how her congregation can be surrounding families. So it's looking at a real situation that's happening in the church, in that community, and saying, how do we as a church community speak into this? What do we need to know? How do we call our congregation to do more in this space? Uh, we also know of another congregation in Dedurance where when they launched their first thousand day ministry, they used a Sunday to share their vision, to share their heart, to share about the importance of the first thousand days so the congregation understood they called the families up to pray for them and it was a beautiful way of launching this ministry in the church and sharing why it was important for the church community to be doing that and so there are different ways of using our gatherings um, and small groups to be speaking up so if you look at how you can grow in speaking up as a first thousand day friendly church when you committed your church to being first thousand days friendly we as Sukunya asked you to fill in a form and in that form we asked two questions around this topic of looking at how your church can be speaking up and the first one was looking at how you can be sharing around God's heart for children 
And so when you think about that, thinking about do you have opportunities to speak, to preach, to teach, to share testimonies um, in your church? Maybe it hasn't happened yet. Maybe you're still very new to Sukunya, but thinking about what are those opportunities? Or in your Sunday meeting, um, your, your church has preached about the role that church has to play in the first thousand days, and you're committed to being a first thousand day friendly church. You've shared that in a Sunday meeting. Or you're using regular opportunities to share God's heart around children. Um, you could use moments like your baby dedications or um, when you're celebrating a birth. Um, these are moments that you could be using even in a sermon or in testimony to be sharing God's heart around this. Otherwise, it's using the opportunities outside of our church gathering in our fraternals, our social media opportunities, like we spoke about earlier. What public platforms do we have outside for our community where we could be sharing around God's heart for children and the role of the church? And so in doing all of these things, we're growing our congregation's awareness around this and our congregation is noticing families in the first thousand days They'll be leaning towards them, reaching out towards them and saying, how can I be part of your village, part of your families? How can I support you? And so when we speak up uh, around God's heart for children and the role that the church has, this is looking at our theology. Um, we're looking at why this is important. We're looking at what scriptures are challenging us around this topic. And so these scriptures can also be challenging our actions and behaviors and attitudes how we as adults treat young children, how we treat families within the space. And so we can think of many scriptures. For example, we can think of Mark 11, um, Mark 11, 13 to 16, or we can think about Luke 18, or we can think about Psalm 139, uh, specifically looking at verse 13 to 14. These are some of the scriptures that come to mind when we think about God's heart for children and how he calls us to care for families. The other way that we can be speaking up is we can think about the issues that families are facing in the first thousand days. Um, there are opportunities that we can speak into that are part of the larger issues faced by families. And we think about children needing to thrive and what are some of the, the things that are in the way of these families thriving, um, what things need to change. We can speak specifically into these issues. So. The first question is, are you aware of these many issues that are facing families? And here we need to be thinking about what's happening in our communities. Um, each community is different. Each community might be facing different things and saying, what are those specific issues that are problematic for the children in our area and our moms and dads who are caring for babies? And how can we preach into them? And so, yeah, you'd be needing to research what issues um, your congregation is facing, speaking to them, listening to them, finding out what those issues are, and then creating regular awareness moments around this um, so that you can be speaking into this, raising awareness into these issues where we're calling people to action, calling for behavior change, and to be thinking about it differently. And so here again, we see the goal is for families to be supported in some of these very difficult issues. So when I say some of the issues that we might be thinking about, we're thinking about what are those barriers or obstacles in the way of parents providing what we call responsive nurturing care, the care that every young baby needs. What is making it hard? How can we speak about these issues that will reduce shame and encourage uh, people to seek help, to seek support, to access services, to gain knowledge and understanding? So think about topics like postnatal depression or mental health. Um, we know that this doesn't make mom a bad mother. Uh, and speaking into this topic can bring light into this topic. It can remove shame and it can allow people to talk about this very important topic and how it impacts our children and how we need to be helping our, our adults who are struggling with depression, especially postnatal depression. And we think about the big topic of stunting and the lack of adequate nutrition in the first thousand days. And we can be speaking up around this. I've already spoken about breastfeeding and how that speaks into this adequate nutrition. And so as a church, we can be speaking about this topic to encourage our mothers and fathers and encourage the whole church to influence this topic. We've mentioned fatherhood already, and we know that fathers play an important role from the beginning of life. And so how we as a whole community can be supporting these dads and fathers. We can talk about 
um, opportunities for early learning and stimulation and encouraging parents and adults to be engaging with our young children, playing with them, talking with them right from the beginning of life. When we think about responsive caregiving and love, and we see how many children are neglected or aren't getting that responsive caregiving. It's a topic we can speak into. We talk about violence in the home and the impact that can have on a baby or a mom who is pregnant. These are big topics that we can speak into. Healthcare issues, um, cultural beliefs or myths or harmful practices that we see in our community. We think about unemployment or teenage pregnancy, grief and loss, alcohol abuse, babies born prematurely, families that are struggling with um, health issues in pregnancy. There's so many things that could be um, impacting how parents care for their children. And so I encourage you to look around and see what are those issues that are specific to families in your church, in your community, and where can you as a church community be speaking up about the sharing good, helpful knowledge and information. On our website, on the Sukunya website, we have lots of information available and um, we've had various um, conversations around conversation around substance abuse, around uh, supporting families through grief and loss, through depression and mental health, um, through supporting parents with premature babies uh, and much, much more. And you're welcome to find all of these topics on our website to help you grow your awareness and give you something that you can be using in your personal capacity to be speaking up about it in your workspace, in your church space, in your networks. Um, you could be using those moments to be speaking about that. Even our social media content, you could be sharing that on your social media platforms and we'll share the links to our social media for you to be following. So I'm going to hand over to Bryony to think about what are those key moments in your church calendar that could be used to be speaking about the first thousand days. Thanks, Ruth. Um, so I'm hoping as we're speaking um, about this, that it's giving you some new ideas or fresh ideas of how you can use the various different areas um, to, to speak up. Um, so speaking up is not just going to happen on its own. We do need to plan um, for this and we do need to use the moments that are in your church calendar um, to help you prioritize or help you put in something about speaking up. So um, for example, if we're looking at fatherhood and the issue of fatherlessness in our societies, and we want to speak up about the importance of, of dad being involved in baby's life from the very beginning, because we know as research is showing that when dads are involved from the very beginning, the, um, mom is more likely to uh, seek uh, health or health care, antenatal classes, antenatal services with the support of dad. If dad is there at the first ultrasound um, and he hears baby's heartbeat, there's, it increases um, the hormone in dad that um, helps him to feel uh, protective and, and love his child. If he does skin to skin, um, which is, you know, baby with naked on his chest. It uh, helps regulate baby's temperature um, and heartbeat and along with promotes good health for dad. There's just so many things that having dad present, whether dad is with mom, married to mom, living with mom or not, dad, the role of dad is so vital. So then if we know all of this, on Father's Day, how about we speak up about these facts that we know, but also engage dads on Father's Day, getting or calling the older men in your congregation to surround um, the younger dads in your congregation or to find the dads in the community that are not part of their children's life and encouraging them to be part of their child's life. Um, we do have resources on um how do you use key moments in your church calendar? But we also have the fatherhood in the first thousand days training to help you with this. But it's a great way. If you think of Father's Day, Mother's Day, Christmas, um, there's just so many different opportunities to add in the first thousand days. Um, and so one of the other ways is baby dedications, um, whether it's a baby dedication, christening, um, uh, baptism, the, the word that you use in your church. We have a script that you can use to uh, speak in that moment about what are the first thousand days that this this family is choosing to dedicate their baby who is in the first thousand days to God and ask the church 
um, to come around those families or to support those families during this time. You're, you're actually asking the church to commit to caring for those families. So we're going to put the, the baby dedication script in the chat box, and I encourage you to, to use that when you next have a um, christening or baptism or dedication to babies. We also have a, a sermon script that we're currently uh, writing and will soon be um, on our website, so look out for that. But another uh, way of um, helping you speak up in your sermons. Um, and so it doesn't necessarily have to be something that's um, uh, a once-off time that you speak about it, but just something that you plan for every year to be able to speak up about the first thousand days um, and the importance of the first thousand days. Um, We've got posters that you can put up in your church declaring that you are a first thousand day friendly church. So we've uh, posted in the chat box the link to these posters and you're more than welcome to print them, uh, laminate them, stick them up on your walls in your um, churches. Um, and this is a way of starting the conversation with your congregation by saying, I'm putting this poster up because our church has committed to being a first thousand day friendly church. Um, as you heard earlier from Ruth, like we do have a social media platform. Uh, we have Facebook, we have Instagram. Um, we were on Twitter. We have to check that one, but we have WhatsApp images or WhatsApp statuses. And so we have a range of resources that you can use to WhatsApp um, your congregation or to WhatsApp uh, parents with good and reliable information. Um, and so do check out our speak up resource page where you can grow your awareness with the information there you can also get tools to help you to speak up um, and like good facts around the first thousand days we have tried to put together all the reliable information that is out there into one um, document or one area so you'll be able to find good and reliable information you can also encourage your congregation or friends or family or co other community members or um, other pastors in your fraternals to join the next church and early life event. Uh, this is the first step that you all would have done, um, which is to hear about what are the first thousand days, the importance of the first thousand days, and what the role of the church is. So we encourage you to get uh, your congregants to sign up to that or other pastors, and we will try our best to win them over as well. Um, but I want to play another video around churches that are speaking up. Just a few ideas of what other churches who have um, been journeying with us for a while of what they're currently doing to speak up in their church. I have learned a lot, especially from the church. We have seen that the church has been neglecting such type of a ministry, of which now we started uh, discussing with families, those with young children and again women who are pregnant and telling them how important is the, the, the time that they, 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 they are expecting. So, yeah, it is difficult because of the culture and beliefs, but people are coming up to understand it, and some are, are being encouraged, and we hope uh, to grow. We hope men will participate, will come in, and we thank God for the ministry. As we continue learning, we we'll also continue passing, passing it to others. So we love to do baby dedications at church on a Sunday and there are multiple reasons for it. Firstly, we want to celebrate every time we see new life in our church family. Secondly, we use it as an opportunity to share our heart and our vision for caring for families in the first thousand days. And lastly, we use it as an invitation. We ask our congregation to come alongside to support and to show love to our families with young children. The elements, principles that we have learned in the first thousand days courses, in the home visiting courses, are now incorporated into our baptismal classes manuals. And moving from here, this is where we have started because we felt we need to move step by step with our congregants and it's part and parcel of our baptismal classes. And even in our sermons, we have included the first thousand days uh, teaching so that our members and congregants understand the type of love, care and need mothers uh, requires. 
You would have seen in that video, it's just uh, three churches as an example of how they are speaking up, whether it's through just talking to the congregation, teaching or preaching or baptisms. Um, but you would have seen that some of those uh, were reverends or church leaders. So when we think of who can speak up, um, we all have a role to speak up, especially when we know how important the first thousand days are and how we can really see a change in uh, the trajectory where we can see a change in the generations in, in South Africa by really focusing in on the first thousand days. I don't know about you, but that was what uh, hit me the most when I first heard about the first thousand days when I first saw the research, um, really is how uh, if we focus in on those early days, how we can really change uh, that child's life and then all children's and we can see a change in South Africa, a generational change. And so I do believe we all have a role to speak up. But we can see that some are leaders. So when leaders speak up, they can speak up from the pulpit in their fraternal meetings where they can share the big idea that they've had for the for their church, the vision that they have for their church to be a first thousand day friendly church um, and make it as an opportunity to welcome in families in the first thousand days um, because they are the ones leading the church. But we also saw Jane's not um, the the leader of the church. She's an individual in the church. And so in her capacity, but also in your church, you could have people who um, are speaking up like in the mums groups or maybe in a home group or your midweek meetings that you have um, where you, uh, people, your congregation are speaking up as individuals. Maybe they are in their homes speaking to their friends or um, where they are challenging maybe some of the uh, practices and beliefs around um, some of the some of the things that may be harmful to baby or to mum. They can also be encouraging the role of dad. So how do you um, encourage or nudge your congregation to support moms and dads and caregivers um, and do you know how to how to, um, should I say challenge or encourage your, your congregants as individuals to speak up in the areas in which they are uh, found you can also have what we say is like a collective nature so when churches come together in the area so it's not just your church what you want to see is that every church in the area are being a first thousand day friendly church so that no family falls in the gap so every single family in the first thousand days is um, supported loved and cared for and so as as the body of Christ and as as the church in South Africa we come together and in a really um peaceful loving ways being able to have conversations about this as a as churches of different denominations having the same voice with the same message um and really showing that this is God's heart for um for children you can also be speaking up in your workplaces or workspaces um, in an area that you may have influence. This is more of an advocacy role, um, but really looking at are you seeing that fathers and moms are being supported in your workplace? Um, is mom getting her uh, right to breastfeeding at times? Um, how are we advocating for, for moms and dads in our workspaces? Um, and so some of you here may be the leaders and you can think about how to uh, encourage your congregation, but some of you may be congregants here that have not been able to get your church leadership on board. Um, and so if your pastor is not yet on board, we do have a resource to help you think through some ideas of what you can do to uh, encourage him. Just to say, firstly, in um, if you increase your your knowledge and your awareness and understanding of the first thousand days um, that you can then go to your leadership and really um, speak to them. It's also a way of speaking up, speaking to them about the importance um, of the first thousand days and the importance that their church and your church uh, play in seeing all children in South Africa thrive. So I encourage you to have a look at the resource as a congregant, you too can speak up to get your pastor on board. I'm going to hand over to Ruth to wrap us up. Wonderful. So some tips um, when we think about how do we do this well, um, how do we speak up well, we just need to be mindful of a few things. Firstly, it is a, we've mentioned this already, of growing your awareness. Um, and so reading, watching videos, um, looking at the resources and saying what is happening in your context, asking questions, finding out what's happening, speaking to others. We want to grow our awareness. 
Um, and then to speak up well, we need to also think about the fact that we're not trying to chase people away or be very judgmental. You're trying to win people over and and this helps them to take action. So thinking about your tone in the way that you are sharing or talking, um, that we're doing this in a tone with kindness and compassion and care, um, whether it's coming from the pulpit or one-on-one, -on -one, the way that we speak to those people, we're doing it in a, a tone that is helpful and winning people over. You're looking for what is the common ground or what is in common with people um, and saying, what can we work with? What do they already know? And how can we use what they already know to get them to where we need them to be? And you are clear with what you have in mind of uh, what you want people to think or feel at the end so that you know what you're trying to say. Um, we're not trying to start an argument, but we're really trying to win the person um, in the space. So it's really about the way that we do it. We're not trying to use guilt or obligation or fear to motivate people, uh, but we're trying to take people on a journey of learning and a journey of awareness. And so we're trying to take them one step at a time. You can't take them from um, unaware to completely like overwhelmed, involved in one step. There's a process of getting your congregation on board. There's a process of multiple conversations that you'd have as you get people on board. And so different people are motivated by different things. And so you are looking and touching on different people's motivations as you think about how you are speaking into the different topics or um, issues. And the passion that you bring to it will also say a lot. So what, as you communicate, think about, are you the best person to be communicated or is there somebody else you need to bring on board to communicate this to these people? Who are the right people? to be speaking into the space, given the context that it's in. So looking at those things, just think about the way that you are doing it, who is doing it, what is being said, what tone is being said, um, that you are taking people on the journey. So I trust that that is helpful as we wrap up today's practical workshop. We have come to two o'clock um, and I want to say well done for being with us today. Um, we are what encouraged by the fact that we all have a role to be speaking up and how we can be nudging those around us to be doing things differently as we think about babies and children in the first thousand days as we think about helping moms who might be struggling we're thinking about dads how can we be using our influence our trusted voice our role of leadership in the community how do we use that well to strengthen our families, to encourage them and to get other people involved in supporting them. So I trust that there's something that you've walked away with today that will be helpful in your space. You are welcome to contact anyone on the Sukunya team if you have any further questions or share with us how you do this. One of our challenges for you this month, our challenge for you this month is to try and use a moment in your church um, so we're suggesting that you use a baby dedication moment or baptism or christening to use that sample script that we've given to speak up around the first thousand days to use that moment in this month. If you have a moment this month, plan to do that. Otherwise, to use a different moment to speak up around the first thousand days in your church, um, whether it's an announcement or testimony, to share this with your congregation. And we would love your feedback. Um, on how that's going, hear your stories, how you've put this into practice in your context with your, your influence and leadership. So thank you for being with us. I'm going to close in prayer for us um, to close this meeting.